D, or D's Dinner Table in Japan, also known as Really Hard to Google in America, is a story-centric game whose story pales in comparison to that of its creator, Kenji Ono. The game is typically described as an interactive movie, which to put it in an unflattering way means it's probably the world's first walking simulator. More favorably, it has some adventure game elements, but some is still fairly minuscule. It also has some slight horror elements, although it's tame as hell compared to the modern day stuff we get. Eno was a musician and designer known for his strange games, like a game for the deaf. After winning a game making competition as a kid, he would go into video games and after getting a job would realize he wanted full control over the projects he made. The game was first released for the 3DO, which was a console that uh, ha had some issues then PlayStation and Saturn, and finally DOS, with an eventual Steam and good old games release, which was how I played it. D's development was about as strange as Eno himself was. Eno decided if the game failed, he would quit video games forever, the game was made on borderline stolen Amiga 4000s, and its most infamous story is that Eno believed that the game was too violent for censors, and as such, he submitted it to the ESRB unfinished, then missed the deadline for submission to the publisher, and while hand-delivering the master, he swapped the game for the uncensored cut. When being ported to the PlayStation, Sony's mishandling of the production will lead to Eno getting in a very public feud with Sony. That's enough of the background though, on to the story. In 1997, Laura Harris is called by the police as her father Richter has killed multiple people at the hospital he works at. When Laura arrives to get answers, the hospital morphs into a castle that she must traverse to find him, but she only has two hours to do so before becoming trapped in Richter's mind castle forever. Outside of some flashbacks in the ending, that covers the story, and we'll touch on the rest in a moment. The story is moderately interesting, but it has very little tie to the gameplay and is really simple despite some neat concepts. D's gameplay is, uh... Not much. A lot of it is walking around very slowly. Every inch of the game is an FMV. Moving in a direction starts another FMV to move to the next stopping point. The movement is all between fixed locations, some of which aren't very good, considering some rooms have strange paths through them that require a bunch of extra steps as the necessary spots are just inaccessible from some other spots. These only other actions are interacting, which is rarely used, and an inventory, which are used in context sensitive situations. The only inventory items that aren't context sensitive are the watch, which tracks the game's real life 2 hour time limit, its only fail condition, and the compact, which gives hints. There's no pause or save, although the game is so short it's hardly necessary. To call the adventure game elements light would be an understatement, as the game has very generously five puzzles in its roughly hour of playtime spread across three discs on PlayStation and Saturn and two on 3DO and DOS. And a lot of that hour is spent doing nothing but walking very slowly. There's also one brief quick time event stuck in there. The only other elements of the gameplay are Hidden Beetles, a collectible that gives Laura flashbacks to her past. Each run has four beetles, two that can be in either of two spaces each, randomly selected at the start of the game, one that I'm pretty sure is in a fixed location, and one that definitely is. The gameplay is terrible, truthfully. There's not much to it at all, and it's harmed heavily by its excessively slow pace. For what it's worth, the control is functional, just excessively slow, and it's not like the game lacks all sense of flow despite that. One discovery will often lead to the next with puzzles connecting into each other across each limited area, with only a few puzzles feeling arbitrary and weird like putting the paper in the bowl. As for difficulty, most reasonable people could beat this game in an hour without help. As for the difficulty, I think most reasonable adults could beat this game in an hour without help. Uh, I did, and since the only failure condition is getting to the two hour time limit, I'd, I'd say it's, it's pretty easy, it's, it's not difficult. The game is in a strange place aesthetically, it's incredibly dated, being full CGI, and I have a hard time gauging how impressive it would have been at the time, but it certainly has some unique aesthetics to it. Being a somewhat open game made entirely of full motion video is something I've never seen, and some visual choices like the weird rainbow effect before flashbacks and even the lighting in said flashbacks are really good. The style might not look entirely appealing anymore, but again, it's interesting. One bad point, the DOS version and therefore the Steam version have scan lines used to reduce the gigantic strain the game caused, which kind of kills the visual clarity on top which kind of kills the which kind of kills the visual clarity on top of the game already being pretty dark. The 3DO version is much cleaner and brighter looking, so it's probably the best version with the PlayStation close behind, while the Saturn version is incredibly, almost unplayably dark. On the other hand, the music made by Eno and his band is pretty damn good. The credits theme, despite having absolutely no coherence with the game, is actually the most fucking awesome shit ever. Now to cover the whole game. This will be short, so I'll just say spoiler warning here. 
The first area doesn't have much going on, just collecting items to reach two locations. The door to the next area, which has a clue on it to the puzzle that unlocks it, and a roulette box where the second number is added to the first. There's a brief scene where a projection of Laura's father begs her to escape as something is trying to control him and force him to kill everyone at the hospital. And there'll be a couple more of these interludes throughout the game I don't mention. After leaving the floor, there's a god tier scene where Laura is chased with a boulder. The comedy value in the scene is immense. It, it's wonderful. Part 2 has a brief intro in a set of rooms, but primarily focuses on the rotating room, which, which is a fairly good gimmick, where a set of rooms are connected by said rotating room, whose puzzles all connect together. It also has the game's only action scene with the night quick time event. Failing the quick time event doesn't kill Laura, instead just tosses her into the pit, which is strangely necessary for 100% as it contains the third flashback. It's also neat that this area allows some sequence breaking with prior knowledge, skipping the Knight's Corridor and Astronomy Tower entirely, which also applies to getting the paper in the first section. After shooting out the stained glass window, Laura climbs to the top floor of the castle. Here there's a large hallway that contains the final memory, so I'll talk about those now. In short, when Laura was a child, she stabbed and ate her mother. This was apparently incredibly disturbing at release, and cannibalism is still pretty unique to this game. It's not something the games tackle a lot. But alone, it really doesn't mean much, so I'll come back to it in a second. There's one final puzzle, which is a gear-turning puzzle, then Laura confronts her father. Her father reconfirms that she ate her mother, saying it's due to their vampire blood, as they are descendants of Dracula, the titular D. In our veins flows the blood of Dracula. Who is now possessing Richter. Dracula then asks Laura to let him eat her, and at this point the ending is chosen. In the bad ending, Laura is eaten and Dracula wins. It's not much of an ending. In the good ending, Laura shoots Richter, killing Dracula too. There's a moderately touching moment where Richter explains that he was curious about Dracula and brought it on himself, apologizes, and dies in her arms. The ending is actually pretty good despite its briefness. I think it's a sweet moment, but there isn't much depth to the story to discuss. The game would become surprisingly popular in Japan and be one of the few successes of 3DO, enough so that Eno wouldn't quit the industry and the game would get two sequels, although they aren't connected in plot. Enemy Zero and D2. There was also an earlier, more direct follow-up to D-Plans, although the D2 that was eventually released was very different. The original D2 followed Laura's son fighting Satan and actually returned to the Dracula plotline, which neither of D's sequels ever did. The game had a trailer released, which was also included as a bonus on the release version of D2 in Japan, and looked to have a more action focus. The game was slated for the 3DO M2, and since that console never came out, the game never did either. The baby crying at the end of D was supposed to be a tease for D2, showing the plan was set for quite some time before the game was eventually cancelled. Despite me ragging on it some, especially in gameplay and despite its obvious age and issue with Link, the game is fascinating. While I didn't really enjoy playing it, I was very interested in it. The game itself is somewhat bad, but the story and atmosphere have a weird vibe that resonates with me. The game almost feels like a weird digital museum and it definitely has quite the history. Hell, it's closer to a weird art house indie short film than a game. In some ways, the game feels ahead of and behind its time. The game is very cinematic, which is certainly a trend now, but due to the limitations of the time, that also means it's barely a game. Honestly, I'd recommend trying it, sheerly because it's so strange. It's, it's an hour long, so there's not much to lose, and there is a quality about it buried in there that I don't think I'll ever forget, despite the game generally being not that great. Oh, my God. 